Welcome back to another edition of TN Toys and another of the Hasbro Loves Super 7 episodes. This time we're going to be looking at the Ultimates. And we'll talk about reaction figures as well a little bit. Okay, Ultimates Transformers from Super 7. Not a line that I'm personally 100% interested in. I like that we're going to get the Ghost of Starscream, they're doing Banzoitron, and you've got the Action Master bombshell as well, and obviously you've got Optimus Prime out first, which is no shock, no surprise, as it shouldn't be. He's one of the main top four characters, uh, Starscream being one of the top four as well, Bumblebee and Megatron being the other two. Okay, we've all seen these. These have been announced for a little while now. So what I'm going to do, I want to go over specifically the Generation 1 cartoon I'm going to cover at the moment because the Transformers universe is so vast now and it's hard to keep up how many blackouts, how many jazzes, how many different hubcabs and bumblebees and skywarps there are. So I'm going to try and stick with a list of things that Super 7 could do that Hasbro have been afraid to do or just won't do. Now I understand that this list it's going to include a lot of weird characters, a lot of weird suggestions. And I know from a marketing perspective, that Super 7 need to push the Optus Primes, the Star Screams, the Bumblebees, the Megatrons. That's where the money is. But, so here we go. And we know from a recent drop that Super 7 has announced Wave 2 and Wave 3 of the Ultimate line. So what comes next? Generation 1 Megatron? That was very predictable. Uh, but that's just nothing wrong with that. We we will love Generation 1 look to Megatron. And then obviously we get the dinosaur mode of Grimlock, who could be included in one of the top 10 top Transformers to go back and do and redo. Grimlock's very popular. And then we've got Bludgeon. And obviously it'll be his pretender shell version. I can't imagine I'll do the little tank dude on the inside. Now this is interesting, because the one of the other characters in Bludgeon's little trio You've got Stranglehold and you've got Octopunch. Now Stranglehold is the character that's often referred to as being like a He-Man-esque looking character. So it'll be interesting to see if and when they may, may or may not get to him, how he'll turn out. Because a lot of people played the, the Pretender Shell with the He-Man figures. I know I did. But moving on, we've got okay, gen Generation 1 tracks. And in Wave 3, we're going to get a Tarn. Now this is where Super 7 really dove straight out of doing just Action Masters and Generation 1 stuff. And they went to Tarn the RDW version of him, which is interesting. A lot of people like this character. I'm not the biggest fan of the DJD, and obviously I fell out of love with the RDW comic. I fell out of love with it. And then the Generation 2 Megatron, I think, too many Megatrons and too many waves. I, I don't know why they did this straight away. They could have done another character than Megatron again. And then what really blew my mind with this line and what inspired the what the hell could they do with this stuff was the alligator con the alligator con is <laughs> a is optimus prime that he well parts of optimus prime that were turned into this alligator creature in, underneath i think new york city and that is actually one of the things that i would be interested in maybe picking up from this line because it's very different it is very different so using the inspiration of that crazy little character from the Generation 1 cartoon. Let's go through the list of what they could do. These are all characters that didn't transform on screen. Some of them do actually have alt modes in other interpretations, but like I said, stick it with the Generation 1 cartoon to see what craziness they can do. But again, don't expect these all to be done because obviously some of this stuff is just not marketable. It is not marketable. But here we go. Halo Nix Maximus. Now, if you're familiar with the Generation 1 cartoon, you know that Hound used his holo projector to create either this made up character or was it, was it a historical Autobot to scare off Devastator. So that'll be an interesting figure to do. Again, they've done scaled up versions of the reaction figures, so he could easily be in the reaction figures as well. This isn't necessarily a all in one for the Ultimates toy line, but it could be also be reaction. And again, another non transforming character. Autobot X from the Autobot Spike episode. Another third party has done this, so it'd be kind of cool if Super 7 can actually do a licensed version of this mishmash of Autobots to, that Spike's brain had to live in for an episode. And then we get Nightbird, 
Now Nightbird doesn't transform in the series, although she has been released officially twice in two separate toys, but it'd be quite neat if we can get a Nightbird with all of her weapons and accessories, non-transforming because she doesn't actually transform in the show, and it's quite a popular fan Decepticon with inverted commas. And then we get the mashup Autobot from the Autobot Run episode, but I think that's to do with racing. And then we're moving on to other things that don't transform. On Cybertron, Shockwave is in charge, and there's the Sentinel robots that patrol the remaining Decepticon cities. Again, it's something that we've never seen officially. This line, this Ultimates line in particular, is a perfect chance to get these crazy, complete left of field characters. And then with that, you get a lot of background or historical looking Transformers, Autobots, Decepticons that appear in many background sequences in a couple of the episodes. I think this is Desertion of the Dinobots again. And then another character that, you know, as a kid I always wanted this because he was a character in the episodes that he's in. He's a full-blown character, he talks. I would actually like them to introduce this as a character in follow-up Hasbro toy lines. Just a simple transformation, it doesn't have to be completely complex. A little buggy or a tank or something. And with the head guard, he can't have the head guard without his drone guards. You can't have him without these. So plenty of these, again, these could be reaction figures or they could be a pack-in with the head guard in the Ultimates line. And we get Doc, an ancient Cybertronian doctor. Funny that. That appeared in the Secret of Omega Supreme episode. I believe he fixes up Omega Supreme at the beginning and sends him off to patrol his city. Perfect chance to either do in Reaction or Ultimate. And in the same episode, now he's since been called the Gyronian Sentry, but he was literally just a Transformer that get his, gets his brain taken over by Megatron in the same episode. Deceptitran, the <laughs> Jabba the Hutt looking Decepticon controller, a character that a lot of people actually have wanted. I would like to see him retroactively input into the comics or cartoons again, but with an alt mode. Something that might suit this round blob with long arms, but bring in Deceptitran. But if we're going Generation 1, going Super 7, again, another perfect example. And in the episode, it's Sea Change. Uh, sea Spray falls in love with a, I'll say human, which is the same episode Deceptitran is in. Uh, Alana, there's like a well where they can turn themselves into anything, and she turns herself into an Autobot woman. Oh, this would be a great opportunity for her to be done in either reaction or alt. And Alpha Trion, again, Alpha Trion has been given many different alt modes throughout the Transformers toy history now. But nothing, he was never officially transformed in the original cartoon. And he has three separate looks. So if they were to do Alpha Trion in Ultimate, I would expect him to have all three of these heads and a whole load of accessories. But as you can see, the original T3 body is noticeably different to the War Dawn body. And then this would be his last look up here. And then from there, probably another thing that inspired this list is the Centurion droids. Now these guys don't transform, and I think a fully articulated Ultimate style figure really, really suits this Centurion droid that just defends the key to Vector Sigma to the last. And with them, you need the maintenance drones that they completely batter and destroy. Two pack, definitely. Another thing that we would love to see, beaten, battered up maintenance droids that you can pull apart with a Centurion droid. And then in that same episode, you've got a lot of weird designs that are on the floor that the Autobots walk past. Again, these, these could be options. And then we've got the Cosmic Rust Autobots. Is this something you'd want to see in, in either Reaction or Ultimates? I, I'm all up for it. Why not? The, these characters appear in the show. This line is great for it. BOT, or BOT. Can't remember what it stands for. I should look that up. Again, another great example of maybe a mini pack-in figure or figurine that one of the other characters come with that maybe Brawl could come with if they ever get around to doing that many characters. Transformers a movie now. We got a Kranix recently in the Quintesson Pit of Judgment. It was too small, no articulation, and there are three key Lithon characters that appear at the beginning of the movie. I would love transforming versions of them, but that probably won't happen. So here we've got Kranix, Arbalus, and the Lithon Scientist. 100% would get these. And then we get the Autobot Combatant. Why didn't Studio Series Hot Rod come with this? And why didn't Studio Series Hot Rod come with the lightsaber, come with the shield? This figure would be a great chance to get those accessories and this combatant droid. Okay, like with Kranix, we did get a Quintesson Prosecutor, but looking at it right now, it was too small, 
There was definitely not enough articulation on it, like the head pops off willy-nilly. Why does the head pop off? No reason. So what I'd love is if Super 7 could do a full, fully articulated each one of these Quintessons to have, so you can build your full-on Quintesson force, so a prosecutor, an executioner, the security officers from the past, the one-faced scientists, the three-faced scientists, the humanoid-looking ones, and the sorcerer-wizard-looking ones. Obviously, the one-faced scientists and the sorcerer are specific characters, so they can be named that on the box as well, but to increase your Quintesson ranks, his, there are so many options. And this is what they should have done in the Siege cartoon. They should have explored the Earthrise cartoon. They should have explored more about the Quintessons instead of just butchering them. Big. This is a big, huge want from me. Again, they don't transform in Transformers the movie. They're just seen as golden statues surrounding the Decepticon uh, coronation area. All, all the old leaders have been thought at the time. And now, obviously, they've retro-changed that the Decepticons were created by Megatron. No, the original Megatron bio does not depict that Megatron was the creator of the Decepticons. Uh, it was somebody that we'll get to in a second that we think may be the first Emperor of Destruction. But here we have, we've got Devron, Bloodron, Murdron, Gulon, Derry, Raparon, Canaberon, Pinoy, Gladuron, and Floron. If Super Seven can get to these crazy mad characters that literally are just golden statues in Transformers movie. I'll be all in. I'll be all in for all of these. I Looking at them, I always wanted to know who they were when watching the original movie. So Super 7, 50 pounds a pop. It's a lot of money you get from me if you did these. And then from there we also get the generic Decepticons which are rallied to scramble and attack Unicron at the end of Transformers movie. A good few designs here that some people may or may not want from the Ultimates or Reaction figure line. But I'm all, I'm like I said, I'm all for doing the crazy left of field characters. Are they all marketable? No, they're probably not, but hey, why not? Just see, see what you can do. We've had enough Optimus Prime's Bumblebees to last a lifetime. Now we've left Transformers and we're going to series three of the Transformers animated generation one cartoon. And these cool characters, Okay, their names aren't Pole Vault Hood, but they're two generic looking Junkions because they're stood with Retgar in the episode. I, I didn't show off all the other Junkions because they actually do transform in the film and there's a hell of a lot of them as well. There's a lot of designs, so they could, they, they could also be done, but Pole Vault and Hood. Let's see how mad Super 7 can go with this line. They did the Alligatorcon, anything's a possibility at this point. And then from there, original heroic leaders that are depicted in Transformers Five Faces of Darkness. Okay, these names have been retroactively put in to them. So they didn't originally have names on screen. But you have Primon, who's like a soothsayer, talking Rodimus Prime through the history of the Autobots in a dream sequence. You've got the original look to Primer, Sentinel Prime, Nova Prime, a Guardian Prime, and Zeta Prime. And I'm not the biggest fan of the 13 Primes thing. Part of me thinks it doesn't really work. I don't mind Unicron being a big bad and maybe demonic of some form and he chooses the body of a Transformer or so on and so forth or gets Primacon to create him a body in the physical world. When it goes to the 13 Primes thing, I don't like it. I, I personally I don't think it works. I'm happy for them to have to each of those 13 Primes to have been a leader like these characters are in the TV show them to have been a leader of the Autobots at some point during the millions and millions of years of war and just introduce them that way you don't need to do some weird god type thing with them just no no and then from there now this character is believed to be a character called Trannis it's never been officially confirmed it's just what people have dubbed him now he's actually meant to be the original insurgent for the Decepticons not Megatron not Megatronus not the Liege Maximo this guy, Trannis. And it's something I would love for them to revisit again. I do think the history of the Transformers does need another look. Like I said, I don't like the 13 Primes thing. I'm just not a fan of that at all. I'm not a fan of Megatron being all out angry, upset, crying minor that he is in modern depictions of him. Hell no, that is, that is such a butchering of Megatron's character in, in my eyes. 
And then also depicted in the same episode <laughs> as Trannis are these generic looking Decepticon warriors that look very Quintus on us. Given that, but another option that we could see. And hell, army builders. We all want, we all want army builders. And then we get some mad character designs on the planet Dread, I think. And these are the Dread prisoners from that episode. There are a few others that are just, they're too small pictures to even bother looking at or concentrating on. But these are like the, the main three designs from that. And uh, this creature chaos is keeping them all prisoner in cup, helps free them eventually. It took him millions of years to go back and free them but he did so again three more designs three more characters give them a life and then in the same episode as a3 alpha trine's original look got this character called beta another female character she's got a cool crossbow and then <laughs> uh, daniel and wheelie are trying to say happy birthday to ultra magnus so they go to this library moon and they visit the custodian bot and another little character could be maybe a pack in figurine but just expanding the ranks of the generation one characters that we've never seen in plastic form at least not officially and then the character null a or nulla that first aid visits after he feels he can't carry on fighting anymore weakening defense or in the process i might add first aid uh, another little fan favorite i always got the him and doc mixed up but they're two very separate characters. We perform a similar function, let's not lie about that. But this guy's probably more of a mechanic than a doctor. And then we get... These two could probably both be Transformers and both turn into bikes, which is the, the tradition of Junkions. We've got Nancy, which is Retgar's wife or other half. Has she got a different name in the IDW stuff? Or am I wrong? Either way, they could do that design of Retgar's, the, the queen of Junkion, and his little dude, the short junkie on that also appears in the same episode and from there we get the episode fight or flee now there are a lot of different colors and variations to the parajon civilian so they could do they could knock out a million of these to so you can have your parajon planet civilization diorama fully kitted out with an eventual sandstorm and playback who has a really neat design i'd love to know what he turned into and last but no means least the weird it creature that was inside the Matrix, the beginning of the Matrix. Looking very Quintesson-esque. That is not a complete list. There are a lot of aliens and human characters that I believe would be better suited in the reaction figure line. So I might go over them in another list. Put in the comments if you really want me to do that. I'll be happy to do it. I've only covered 1984 to 1986 on this list. I could definitely look at the old the old Japanese Headmasters, Master Force, Victory series to see what crazy little designs are hidden in the back of those episodes. And don't forget to love, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.